Reacting to being cut off by the SWIFT banking system, Iran has now threatened to block the Strait of Hormuz, a major artery in global oil shipping. Now that warning comes as US and Israeli intelligence agencies, the CIA and Mossad, admit that Iran hasn't yet decided to develop nuclear weapons. Well, let's uh, discuss this in depth now with Peter Rushton. He's a political analyst and historian joining me live there in London. Well, Iran's been threatening for quite a while to shut down the Strait of Hormuz. Could we really see this happen now? Well, I think what we're seeing at the moment has been uh, is the culmination of a long-term effort by Iran's enemies to force the Iranian government into a corner to force them into a position where they're left with an invidious choice between on the one hand having to steer a course between on the one hand seeming uh, to be bullied and giving in and appearing weak and on the other hand allowing themselves to be provoked and allowing themselves to be forced into a confrontational position and uh, the reasons what we've for seen today with these and, financial oh, sorry just to ask you the reasons for pushing iran into the corner all of it based on the supposed nuclear ambitions there. Now, as I've just mentioned, Mossad, the Israeli spy agency, is now joining the CIA in admitting that Iran has not decided to develop nuclear weapons. What do you make of that turn in events? Well, that was an extraordinary development, particularly in a very detailed story that appeared in the New York Times on Sunday. Now, those stories don't appear by accident. And I think what that reflects is the reaction of professionals in the intelligence community, diplomatic and intelligence professionals, who once again are having their reports, having their work abused for political and ideological reasons. There's a political ideological agenda in Washington and Tel Aviv, to an extent here in London as well, to willfully misinterpret intelligence, to slant or to spin, to use the term that's become used recently, to spin intelligence in a direction that forces people on the path to war. We saw it in Iraq, where there, there, there were absolutely disastrous consequences from intellig the intelligence process being abused. <clears throat> and I think we're seeing it now here in Iran and the development on Sunday where certain people, certain individuals spoke out, of course, on condition of anonymity, senior people in the intelligence services who once again can see their work being undone all their years of professional work being undone by a politically motivated ideological agenda of special interest groups driving the agenda. Does that not suggest some sort of internal conflict going on in Israel when we see Israeli politicians simply ignoring their intelligence agency? Yes, well, of course, as far as Israel's concerned, there's been a conflict, in a sense, going back right to the foundation of the Israeli state between those people that want to force the agenda of the maximum Israeli state, a state that, of course, has no uh, set borders. The, the, uh, the, the Zionist ambition was to extend from the Nile to the Euphrates, and the hardliners there, okay. right the way back to the 1940s, were wanting to force that. Peter, just we very, see today uh, right. the legacy of that. Sure, and just very quickly though, if Mossad doesn't think there is some sort of uh, threat then, why are we seeing mystery assassinations taking place there of nuclear scientists in Iran, which of course Tehran is, is blaming Mossad? Yes, and I, and, and I think there the, the conflict within Mossad is between people who want to put pressure on, to carry out assassinations, to do that sort of thing, and those people who want an all-out military strike. And the, uh, they're, they're alternative policies rather than complementary ones, almost. And just very, very briefly, despite, despite you saying the political agenda, we've seen the EU, of course, putting a lot of pressure on uh, uh, Tehran. Do you think, in the light of these messages from the CIA and Mossad, will we see an easy of tensions though despite what the politicians are saying do you think that could happen well that depends on that depends on who those politicians are the, the main uh, bangers of the drum for war have been Sarkozy in France Cameron here Sarkozy might no longer be in power in a few weeks time very likely won't be in power and as far as Cameron's concerned if he wants to go all the way for military conflict with Tehran he'll face big problems with his Liberal Democrat colleagues in the coalition that could be a deal breaker for the, some of those Liberal Democrats in the coalition will they be courageous enough to stand up against Cameron. That could determine London's policy. Peter, great to talk to you. Thank you for your thoughts. Peter Russian there, live in London. Cheers.